All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below for anybody who wants to support me. You only do so if you actually can. First video since the geography live stream. If you weren't able to catch it, the video form of it is up on the channel now. But anyways, likely short episode this time. Just a quick look into and explanation of what I'm referring to as the population paradox. By which I mean the sort of divide in the road that we kind of face and ultimately both actually would sort of end the same way anyways so as you're probably aware the population of the earth is getting close to 8 billion and obviously when dealing with population overpopulation and the actual problem that it's referring to resource demand stress is obviously the first thing that comes to everybody's mind however there is also the inverted demographics pyramid issue or the issue of underpopulation, at least in regards to young people, particularly working age people, as there are inevitable limits to how many people we can handle, especially in terms of continuing development for all of society, in which the aim is eventually to have everyone living at first world living standards. For those particular aims, 8 billion people is not workable. The roughly, depending on how narrow or how wide, you want to allow the definition of first world living standards to be the roughly two to three billion people that already live at first world living standards now is already straining many limits as is. So the whole excessively high amounts of people thing kind of is already creating a problem and is a problem that is only going to enlarge itself. So it would be better to have a lower total number of people, a direction which we are actually going to very soon be heading in, as birth rates across the world have collapsed over the later part of the 20th century, some so much so that some countries are already seeing population declines. However, this also is its own problem as well, because while in the long run, yes, we kind of do need to drop we are already on course to drop a bit too quickly. You see, ideally what you would want to have happen is have your birth rate get down to around, or particularly for maybe a century or so, be just under the replacement level, like right around two, in which case larger chunks of the population that were born back when birth rates were, you know, like four or five, six children per woman, you will see a sudden population decline as those generations pass away. Then your population trajectory would start to level out a bit. And if your birth rate was below replacement level by just a little bit, then your overall number would continue to very, very gradually decline as once those larger earlier generations pass away, then the subsequent generations following each other after that would each be roughly the same size, and the younger working generations afterwards would continue to roughly equal those above them that are aging out of work. However, the situation we are actually looking at in many cases is quite different, in that birth rates are actually consistently going well below replacement level, with many countries on average dropping down to usually like 1.5 or 1.6. These setups create an inevitable problem. Having birth rates that low, the population decline staying steeper than just a very gradual one, means you're in a situation with those birth rate numbers that your older need to be supported generations are going to continue consistently being much larger than the younger working generations. And this becomes a critical issue because if your baseload of younger, basically sub 40, sub 50 people is shrinking too quickly, then on the wider scale, your ability to manage and do things will begin to be strained by that because on the government side, that's less and less of a working population, which results in less tax revenue, and also less and less people economically spending, which generates the other end of tax revenue. And on the other side, stuff that's done by industries then becomes at risk because of the amount of people spending on their services, buying their stuff, decreases too quickly or outright collapses, then that puts them long-term into a revenue crunch, which constrains their ability 
to access and develop raw materials and continuing to manufacture and develop new products. So a rapid population decrease, again a rapid one, also would actually cause severe problems. Similar to if the population continued expanding too quickly, the cascade that would result from both of them would actually be the same because if the population kept expanding too quickly, you would end up crashing into the walls of various resource limits and start hitting various depletion curves, which would lead to rapid constraints, which would lead to both systemic breakdowns and inevitably chaos and continue in an affecting spiral until the ultimate result was mass death on a global scale. Whereas if you have a demographic collapse with a highly inverted population pyramid, then you're going to run yourself into a scenario where despite the presence of automation, you don't actually have enough of the still required human labor to keep everything running properly. And also you are now absent both on the government and industry end of what would be the required levels of revenue and funding to continue with production and resource availability. Thus again, just by different means this time, leading to abrupt resource and availabilities and massive systemic breakdowns leading to chaos, bringing about a global wave of mass death, just as in the first scenario, the rapid population expansion. Both pathways basically bring you to the same place. So in terms of our actual reality, we went far enough one way to where we're running into the problems of that now, and have flipped so far the other way that we are now going to be diving into the problems of that route, also already starting to stack the early precursors of the issues that the first route would have brought to us on top of ourselves. And that's the basic run all of it. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon down there if you want to support me. You only do so if you actually can. You can also go subscribe to my Catch channel. Try to help us get up to a thousand subs before the November or December deadline. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect you all. And I will see you all around next time.